Hi, Stephen Brand. Thank you for coming on to Automation Chat. It is great to see you. Thanks for being here. Good to see you again, Teresa. Thank you Good for having me. I always love talking about VFDs and, and cable because there's so much to learn. And uh, as I was telling you off camera before we started, your two previous podcasts were very popular. So it's great to talk about shielding today. So before we dive in, could you briefly describe what Southwire does for listeners who might not know? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, Southwire is a large manufacturer of electrical wire and cable. Uh, we have facilities all throughout North America. Uh, we manufacture most of those cables here in the U.S. and we have a wide array of products, including some of the ones we're talking about today, which is our VFD cables. Okay, so to start, can you describe for me some best practices for terminating and grounding the shield of a VFD cable? Yeah, I can uh, I can answer that, Teresa. Uh, it's very, very important to, to consider termination because if you don't terminate the cable properly, you don't realize all the benefits of that VFD cable. Uh, and when I talk about termination, I'm talking about terminating that shield. Um, what you want to do is you want to have a uh, low impedance at high frequency termination at both ends of the shield. Um, what, what that means is low impedance at high frequency is a large surface area termination. So at high frequency, which is, is, is the, the frequencies that VFDs generate that can cause problems, um, at that high frequency current likes to flow on the surface of a conductor and not through its cross-sectional area. It's a, a, something called the skin effect. And so because it likes to flow on the surface, we want to have a large surface area to, to uh, minimize that impedance as much as possible. Thanks. And thanks, Steve. And I know both you and all the folks at Southwire have a lot of experience. So Taking that, can you share what type of questions you get from electrical contractors out in the field? Sure, sure. I'll take that one, Teresa. So, yeah, we have all kinds of questions out in the field from our electrical contractor customers around the shielding and what to do with the shield. And there's multiple types of shields with uh, VFD cables. And a lot of people just don't know what to do with that shield. And I'll give a specific example. We, I was up at a customer up in the north central region uh, just before a couple of years ago. And this customer was doing the right things. Uh, they knew they needed a VFD cable. In this case, that we're talking about a tape shield type product. They knew they needed it in between the drive and the motor, but their electricians installing it in their factory, uh, they didn't know what to do with it. So what they ended up doing with it, which I was very surprised, uh, they just cut the shield off completely. They just took electrical scissors, cut the shield completely off. So. Uh, the reason I actually went up there was to do some training with those guys so that we had a big crowd uh, come in, we had their whole team come in, and we, we actually went through a termination workshop. And uh, they, you know, that, so we see, it, we see those types of things happen. Uh, we see people terminating uh, on one side of a, a jumper and then transitioning from, let's say, a disconnect switch to a, a single conductor, non-shielded, non-BFD product. And then they lose a lot of the benefits or most of the benefits that you'd realize from using this specialized type of cable. And so, you know, that's one of the things that we have a group that's focused on, Steve, myself, and, and, and some others here at Southwire, uh, from our engineering team to our product management team as well, that we really try to get out in front of those contractors and do education type work. Because, you know, again, they're, if they're, they're going out, they're doing the right things, trying to do the right things, but then they don't know, know what to do to install it then you know, they're not gonna realize what they're, the benefits of what they're trying to achieve. And I'll, I'll give one more uh, example. So this was a, a new Greenfield facility uh, down here in the Southeast where I, where I reside. Uh, so with the, this electrical contractor had never installed shielded products. And so when we went up and talked to them, they used a couple of different types of cables. They used the copper tape shield. They also used the braid shield that's typically used for more flexibility. And in, in their installations. And so when I went into that customer, uh, that electrical contractor, they they had never installed any type of shielded product in the past. So we we really tried to bring them up to speed on what to do with that shield. And, and again, their their natural inclination was at the at the cutoff point, at, at the termination point, to go ahead and just cut that that shield off. 
But thankfully, you know, that was part of our, our, our whole package, right? We're trying to go in and offer, you know, not only the cable, not only the uh, terminations, but also the how-to. And so, we, you know, it, so it runs the gamut. So it seems like it's more about an education issue than trying to get make shortcuts or save money, sounds like. It, it is. There's there's widely accepted practices for terminating that shield, but they're just not that well known, unfortunately. A, another example is one of the common VFD cable constructions is to have uh, three conductors, a full-size ground, and then a full-size drain wire all underneath the shield. Well, most electricians, when they see a drain wire, they think they know exactly what to do with that thing. And because drain wires are found in communication cables and the practice there is to terminate it at one end and let it just cut it off and let it float at the other end. And unfortunately, that, that's a great way to terminate a, a communication cable, but it's a really bad way to terminate a VFD cable. One is that drain wire is small surface area, so it doesn't have a low impedance at high frequency. And, and two, you really want to make a connection there to be able to bring something called common mode current back to the drive. And so you need connections at both ends or that won't happen, right? So um, uh, we, we as cable manufacturers, I think, do a disservice in, if we just talk about the cable because with that construction, we're almost tempting the, the electrician to do the wrong thing. So we're, we're very big on, on education and getting the word out on that. Mm -hmm. And I'll interject there. Steve, Steve brought up a good point. That's another thing that I didn't mention, but because the communication type cables are typically done that way, you know, that's another uh, common misconception out in the, in the field that they do terminate on one end. So that's another, you know, we've got several white papers out there that kind of address that or that do address that. So that is something that we, we speak a lot of out in the field because they see that drain wire. They think they know what to, to do with it, but it's just because it historically, it, they've been installing a, a low, low, you know, low voltage communication wire, which is completely different than what you'll see in a BFD to motor application. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can put a link to one or two of those white papers in our episode description for this episode. Um, let's move to termination boxes. Now, when users are grounding these cables at intermediate termination boxes, do they need to do anything special? Ah, uh, yes, they do, Teresa. And that's a really good question. And we're getting that question a lot because it's not, again, it's just it's just not well known. Um, I was working with a customer that had a motor control center. They had hundreds of drives and each of these drives had an emergency stop and they, uh, they bought VFD cable. They did the right thing there, but their contractor installed VFD cable from the drive to the e-stop and then used THHN from the e-stop to the motor, which broke that continuous path to the motor to the drive. And with an unshielded THHN cable, you can get a lot of electromagnetic interference and they were having all kinds of problems. So best practice and uh, one of the links that, uh, that, that you can put in, in the uh, comments of, of this uh, session, we'll put to our brand new application engineering note that talks about this. What you really wanna do is you want to use a connection for that braid on both, uh, you know, use VFD cable on both ends and then you've got the VFD cable here and the VFD cable here and use it like a copper braid to bridge that to, to make a con continuous uh, a continuity connection, right, of that shield so that it, it's almost like there's a, a piece of cable in, in that e-stop. You want to cover that with electrical tape or with uh, shrink wrap so that it doesn't touch the sides of that box if, if that box is grounded. Uh, because that can be a jumping off point for that for that common mode current. So we want to contain that uh, within the, within the cable shield. Obviously, the the cable is jacketed, so that's insulated. So we just want to insulate it where we're connecting the two together. And uh, uh, it's something that's often overlooked. And really, if you're going to go to the trouble to buy VFD cable to run it all the way to the e stop, you know, you need to run it the rest of the way to realize the benefits of that cable. Absolutely. And, and, and I'll say, add, add to that as well. Um, that's probably, as Steve mentioned, you know, on a commercial product side, in the last maybe two and a half years, that's probably the number one question we've been getting. Um, you know, it, it's a combination of, of what to do with the shield and then, 
you know, what do I do from the termination uh, and e-stop uh, junction boxes? So, you know, we get that all the time as well. And it's not, that's a little, that is a little more, I guess, a complicated, probably not the best word, but it is a little more complicated than most are typically uh, used to uh, dealing with if you've never dealt with PFD cables before. Um, but it's not, it's not that it's hard. It's, it's just, it's hard to explain. So, you know, that's why Steve wrote it, Steve and Mark, uh, another engineer of ours that's, uh, that's a, uh, also does electrical work. He, uh, they wrote a white paper to address that, to spell it out easily and clearly on how to properly deal with those uh, BFD uh, termination boxes, at the, the BFD cable at the termination boxes. Yeah, it details it much better than I explained it, that's for sure. So <laughs> please download it and read it. Well, that sounds good. And I'm really glad I asked because I didn't realize how major that was. Now, Southwire is a Rockwell Automation Technology Partner, which means, <clears throat> excuse me, you offer technology that works with theirs. So what are Rockwell Automation's recommendations for terminating BFB cables? That's a really good question. And um, we've worked hard to make sure that we're not only in line with Rockwell's termination uh, uh, recommendations, but really they're they're the same regardless of the drive manufacturer. So if someone's listening to this and using somebody else's drives, the concepts are all are all the same. Rockwell does a very good job of detailing um, in, in their installation guide, drives INS, I think it's called. You can do a Google search for it. And what they talk about is you want to use a 360 degree termination. And again, that wraps all the way around the shield, right, on, on, on both ends. So giving you that low impedance and high frequency termination, they say use a 360 degree termination at both ends of the cable. You wanna bond at one end of that cable shield, you wanna bond it to the drive, and at the other end, you wanna bond it to the motor. Now, Rockwell does say that you can use that pigtail or, or, or that drain wire type connection, um, pigtail in some cases. Um, and they list some of, some of the examples in that document. We just try and simplify it because you never know for sure. So we just say best practice is to use that 360 degree termination at both ends of the cable. Um, so we, we try and go a little more into the detail on how to do that. Also, we have some videos of how to terminate these cables. We can put the link in for those as well. Um, but but we're 100% in agreement with Rockwell on, on how that needs to be done. Well, that sounds like great resources. So we'll add those links to the episode description for our readers. And this is all incredibly useful information and I wanna keep going, but we're running out of time. So I wanna thank you both for being here and sharing this. And I know the links will help educate our listeners even more. And thank you for chatting with me today. Thanks for having thank us. You. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you to our listeners and our YouTube viewers for joining us. I'm Teresa Houck with the Journal Magazine. We'll chat again soon.